Joining us now on the Folsom Lake Honda Hotline, Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop to talk some Giants and talk some baseball. Former Giant, two-time World Series champion, now with NBC Sports Bay Area. It's a pleasure to welcome in George Contos. George, how are you this afternoon, man? I'm great, fellas. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Uh, just before we get into some of the bigger picture baseball stuff, we head into the All-Star break. Just sort of your a temperature check on how you feel about the Giants so far this season compared to the expectations you might have had for them coming into the year. Well, I think the expectations are are uh, a little bit better than uh, than how the season started with them being six and thirteen and now being what are they forty nine and forty one I think with the third wild card spot. So I think that uh, with what they've overcome and how well they played from May up until about you know a week to ten days ago, every, everyone should be very excited on what they've seen. And once they get healthy again, they have a real shot to maybe do some damage. Georgie, we go way back to our days at NBC Sports Bay Area. I was uh, on the production side of things, so it's really cool to have you on and talk to you. I was just blown away yesterday by Logan Webb's shutout, his complete game shutout. Heading into the All-Star break, as a former player, how does that affect your vacation, honestly? How does that affect your break? (laughs) Because what he did yesterday completely changed the momentum. It really changed the feel of how this team is going into the break. Does that affect you as a player during the All-Star break? You know, Logan, Logan has kind of uh, come, come to be the guy that can make a stamp uh, and really kind of get things onto the right foot. And uh, going into a, a three- or four-day break, whatever they got coming up now, I think the next day is the 14th. The next game is the 14th. So they got four days off. Um, I guarantee you that everyone is feeling very good about that 1-0 win, nobody more so than Logan Webb. He's the guy who really prides himself on being able to go deep in games, eating innings. I remember talking to him last year in September. And, you know, he re- he really wasn't thrilled that he wasn't going to hit that 200 inning mark and um, knock on wood, he can stay healthy because he'll blow right by that this year with him leading the, the, I think both leagues, just leading all of baseball and in innings pitched by a starting pitcher. So that's something that's really important to him. And, I, and I'm glad that he has that mentality because uh, he's one of those guys that wants the ball and he wants to take it as long as he still has pitches available. Logan Webb's a local guy here in Sacramento. He's from Rockland, went to Rockland high school. What impresses you most about Logan? I just like how much of a gamer he is. You know, he, he we we spend a lot of time together where I where I stay in uh, in the city, and and he kind of goes and has uh, a beverage after his starts, and has got the whole Web Clan, his mom and dad, everyone's there. So I've really gotten to spend a lot of time with him, and he's just such a good guy off the field. Always got a smile on his face, but when it's time to walk in between the white lines. Um, you know, he really gets his game face on. He takes it seriously and he's got that dog in him and he's got that kind of, um, that really good competitive instinct that you love to see. You know, he reminds you of like a Matt Cain or a Madison Bumgarner taking the mound. So it's really great to watch him every fifth day go about his business. You know, talking with George Contos of NBC Sports Bay Area here on Sacktown Sports, uh, a guy who I, th- I think the Giants and Giants fans are hoping have have a few all-star appearances and that's the the prospect Luis Matos, who that you've you've gotten a taste of him at the major league level now this year. What what do you see from this kid? And Sacramento residents are familiar with him, having played his Triple A ball around here. What have you seen from this kid so far? Well, I've seen somebody who's got a really good approach at the plate to start off his major league career. I mean, the the, the clip at which he was walking on and showing uh, the discipline that not swinging at pitches out of the strike zone has been fantastic. Um, I think he I think he um, obviously plays a fantastic center field. He can hit for, he's going to be able to hit for average. He's got a good arm. Um, I think the power will continue to develop. I think he's about a four and a half tool player with, with the power that's going to come as he puts on some weight and gets more comfortable at the major league level. Um, but, but the biggest thing for Luis Matos for me is just going to see how he bounces back once the league sees him a little bit of time, because there is that learning curve where you get called up and guys don't know you very well. And once they start to see you a little bit, that's when you have to start making the the uh, transition into kind of playing that cat and mouse game, understanding what the league's trying to do and understand how to get better and approach it that way. George, you came up with the Yankees and you made your debut with the Yankees. When you're a young kid like Luis Matos and you come into a clubhouse, how big of a deal it is to have a good clubhouse atmosphere when you're called up, when you're a rookie to figure things out? Oh, man, I think club atmosphere – you know, team chemistry, camaraderie, whatever you want to call it, I think is the, the number one most important thing um, that can lead to a team's success. And I was very fortunate to be on two of the three world championship teams. And we were by no means the best team on paper. I think that everyone 
uh, was screaming that as the playoffs were going to start. So they were blue in the face, but we ended up pulling together and everybody kind of had the right attitude pulling for one another. And that's a really, really big, important thing. You know, when I came up, which was in 2011, it's a lot different back then than it was and than it is now. You know, he comes into a clubhouse that is just a little bit different, that kind of old school way of baseball that you and I have talked about plenty of times, FP. Um, that's kind of not really the same anymore. When I, when I got called up, there were guys like Mariano Rivera, J- Derek Jeter, Robinson Cano, A-Rod. I mean, all those guys were in the clubhouse. So I didn't really do much talking when I got first called up. I was just kind of looking around and trying not to get in anybody's way. Uh, and the game's a little bit different now with, with the kind of old fashionedness being old fashionedness being kind of uh, phased out a little bit. And speaking of the old fashioned way of baseball and things being phased out, we've seen a lot of rules changes in the game this week. And I think they've had, if, if, if you're, if you're in the major league baseball front offices, the desired effects that they wanted, the game is moving faster, more action on the bases, more ground balls, getting through shorter games, and on top of that, I think you're seeing an emergence of of some great young superstars in this league, like like uh, the the kid in in Cincinnati. You got Shohei Otani, you got uh, Julio Rodriguez in Seattle, and we were talking earlier in the show that I feel like between the evolution of the game and the young superstars of this game, the sport is headed in a positive direction for for the first time in a long time in my eyes. How do you feel about the state of baseball right now, George? You know, I think the state of baseball is definitely better this year uh, than, than I think it has been. The, the pace of play was obviously something that for a long time was a big deal. Um, but a lot of these rules that were implemented were, were in there to get some of the things that used to be done. The, the steals, the, whole, the, the uh, hit and runs, um, the small ball effect of baseball had been lost because of launch angle and how, you know, quote unquote sexy it was for uh, balls to be leaving the ballpark. And, and you know, you, you've seen You saw strikeouts increase year over year for a decade, along with home runs increasing year over year for a decade. But then batting average was going down in that same span. So they 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 found for for a few years that uh, people love to see the long ball, but then they got carried away. So they're trying to bring a little bit of that small ball and people actually running the bases again, playing good defense and having more range of motion with the banning of the shift. Um, I still think the little league rule of a guy on second base and extra innings is horrible. It's the one that I'm really not a big fan of. I don't see how you can justify winning a major league baseball game in extra innings without a baseball leaving the infield. Um, but the pitch clock, now that I'm a former player and not a current player anymore, I love the fact that games are two and a half hours. Um, so I, I'm, I'm a fan of, of some of the things that they've done. I think the game is headed in a, in a really good direction right now. Georgie, the home run derby is tonight. So I got a two part question for you. Who do you got? Who's winning it all? And number two, what's the one home run you remember most from your career? Just giving one up, just the farthest one oh, possible. Bro, I got, I got, I got. <laughs> you had to ask I him that. Knew, I, I knew you were going to go yeah. there. I knew you were going to do that to me. Um, so uh, who do I got tonight? I'll tell you what, Pete Alonzo is a guy that's really hard to root against, but you got some really, you got some really exciting young players, you know, a Rosarena is a guy who's a super competitive dude. Uh, Mookie Betts, I'd never bet against Mookie. Mookie's a great athlete. I think he can put on a show. Uh, Luis Robert Jr. has obnoxious power. I think what Luis Garcia from the Rangers is in it as well. Um, I- I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to root against um, against Pete Alonzo, but I mean, Vladdy Jr. is in it. It's going to be a really fun, young group of guys putting on a show. And uh, to answer your other question, I think there's a, there's a 1A and a 1B on home runs I've given up, and I'd say the 1A would be giving up Braden Kershaw's opening day home run to solidify his complete game shutout and his only home run of his career off of me. That'd probably be one I'd want back very, very much. <laughs> the, second one, the second one was the, the grand slam that I gave up to A-Rod in Yankee Stadium in 2013. I, I I have watched the replay an ungodly amount of times. I'm still living and dying with the fact that it was not a bad pitch. It was two balls off the plate, down and away, and he went out and flicked the grand slam out to right field and tied, uh, I think, Mickey Mantle for the most grand slams of all time. Wow. On that Th- play. Those are the ones that hurt, right? When when you when you make the right pitch and you hit your spot and the guy still just, just, just outdoes you and puts it over the fence. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he hit a home run. So I mean, it, it must it should have been a better pitch to that effect. But I think it was, a, it was a two. It was a it was a two one count. He was sitting fastball. He was sitting fastball away, 
And Yankee Stadium just has a, a short porch to right field where the ball travels. And he got it like second or third row. That's George Contos, former Giant, two-time World Series champion. Catch him now. Talking Giants on NBC Sports Bay Area and our guest for the last few minutes. George, really appreciate the time and the insight. Thanks a lot. Hey, George. Yeah, my, my pleasure. I got one thing for you. I just want to let you know, uh, I love you, but I have to knock you down a little bit. Got to knock you down a notch. I test, texted uh, Reese Hoskins first over you to come on and uh he didn't get back to me but we appreciate you having on yeah thanks for coming on next time i'll go to and um, you'll never have me (laughs) Uh, thanks thanks for the time man there's there's george contos on the Folsom lake honda hotline Folsom lake honda your one-stop honda shop you don't tell a guy that you don't tell him he was plan b as a guest that's not Hey, I know Georgie very well, okay? I came up with him, actually. His first ever on-air uh, show as an analyst when he was at you NBC his producer? I was his associate producer. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So, I was helping him out a little bit, and uh, we've had a great friendship since. So, nice. we, we, we hang out a lot, and uh, it was a really cool moment just having him on and talking a little baseball with him. Love so, talking a little baseball. Yeah. Seems like a 